You can power it by anything. Whatever power source is the best for the world you want. But the point is we can manufacture cars better. At 104.72 miles per gallon on diesel, not only does it have a better range and no toxic batteries to have to replace, and is it less costly and less environmental impact to produce than an electric vehicle, it's also cheaper to use and go somewhere in. That's the other reason why these electric car mandates simply do not work, are unfair, unrealistic, and unnatural. I can build a nuclear hybrid car with the same techniques. Now, the, the Omega car is efficient and fast because I made it that way, because I thought for myself and built something worthwhile. Now, I know that all of you want some magic thing, like I made it out of something you've never heard of, or I've programmed something, or I designed something new. No, I didn't. Everything that exists within that car is something that somebody else could do too. And frankly, the concepts are probably something somebody's already thought of too. But the difference is I went out and did it. By the way, if you want to know how to pronounce my last name, it's Putsch, as in put your money where your mouth is. Hey, I'm Casey Putsch, and this is my Omega car. Two weeks ago, many of you saw it achieve 104.72 miles per the gallon on diesel and do an actual zero to 60 run of 4.61 seconds. Now clearly, that's tremendous miles to the gallon considering it was just driven through the countryside with stop signs and roundabouts and corners and stopping and starting. Very good. Obviously destroying the Dodge Viper and the Corvette. But what's interesting is I was able to also out accelerate the Dodge Viper and exactly match the acceleration curve of the 2019 Corvette Grand Sport. Also, I do have to put a sidebar that General Motors and many manufacturers are effectively cheating and lying on zero to 60 times, where now instead of actually having to do it from zero miles an hour, they count it from a rollout. So that's why modern cars have lower zero to 60 times than they should. But I digress. It also matched the acceleration of a Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, which is a good comparison of rear wheel drive to rear wheel drive. So why is that relevant? Well, at 104.72 miles per gallon on diesel, not only does it have a better range and no toxic batteries to have to replace, and is it less costly and less environmental impact to produce than an electric vehicle, it's also cheaper to use and go somewhere in. Because even the Tesla to charge a supercharger is more expensive than it is to fuel this. <laughs> now I'm going to save for another video things that relate to policy, law, and unfortunately politics. But this is very important because right now in the Western world, and frankly many places of the world, we are all being swept with mandates where we're going to be forced to buy electric cars. When I think many of us know there's something very wrong with this. Clearly. But in any case, why is the Omega car so efficient? How was it able to do it? Casey? That's oh, simple. Good design. Good thinking from start to finish. Our cars, our automobiles are highly inefficient, period. They are an evolution of over a century of the industrialized world that was built on steel and powered by oil. Constants like companies and nations and politics and policies that want money and power and control have altered the evolution of the automobile. And no longer even are our hypothetically environmentally friendly cars environmentally friendly. We don't build cars to last. We literally build them to break, to cost more money, to be consumed. We, we don't care about things like coefficient of drag. We don't care about things like what is the actual environmental cost? What is the actual energy to create? We don't think of those things because we just care about the superficial aspect or not in my backyard, as it seems many people see. But that wasn't good enough for me. Over 10 years ago now, I was frustrated by things in the political world, things that I considered were lies. And that drove me to do better. That's what this is. Now I have said this is a sustainably recyclable car concept that represents different techniques that you can build something better. And a lot of people that are somewhat micro-focused go, what's the drivetrain? What did he do with the engine? How is it programmed? How does it do that? Relax. Then there's the other people go like, it must be super lightweight and that can't be it and it's dangerous and it doesn't meet emissions. Everybody's looking for a reason to say why this car was able to do something that we as a world and nation are not. 
The answer is simple. I just used good design practices. It looks like that for a reason. Form follows function. And it functions really well. But the point of it is this, and I said this in a video, it's not about making a two-seat sports car. I did that so people would pay attention. I can use those same practices and design methodologies and build any car. I can build trucks. I can build structures, architecture, home goods, furniture, all of the above. With regard to what materials to use, you can do it with a myriad of different materials. I'll give you some examples that aren't, they're just simple pu public knowledge. Henry Ford, back I think in the 1930s, built a car from soybean. I think it's sitting up at the uh, Henry Ford Museum. You can build composite things out of flax and hemp, but we don't. There's many recyclable polymers out there that we don't use much. Obviously, there's different metals and metallurgy that can be recyclable, and that's effectively what we do. Our cars are stamped steel boxes with chairs built, bolted in them. But they're inherently terrible design. They're inherently not designed well from, as people call, cradle to grave, with the cycle that is consumerism. And that's where we're killing ourselves. That's where everything is toxic and too expensive for people. And that's where I got tired of it and said, forget all of it. There's also recyclable and better earth composites from glass and carbon, even basalt composite. There's many things out there like that that can be used with similar design and engineering practices to build something. Now, some of you may be catching on right now. Well, Casey, if it's just good design practices, then what'd you do with the drivetrain? Uh, it's diesel. It's turbo diesel. It's four cylinder with a five speed. Basically, I just utilized the most readily available efficient motor I could get in the United States. Diesel also is a very flexible and good fuel. I also chose diesel, a basic just ICE combustion engine, because the world understands miles per gallon or kilometers per liter, which by the way, I have to look up, I did this for you guys that don't live in America. Okay, so miles per gallon in the United States is 104.72. Miles per gallon imperial, if I got this correct for England, is 125.76 miles per gallon. And if the converter was right, 44.52 kilometers per liter. I hope that's correct. In any case, it gets 104.72 miles per gallon in the United States. But people understand that, and they understand zero to 60. And I wanted the world to understand what we can do if you simply design better. Okay, now I know a bunch of people are going to be, Casey, that doesn't meet any regulations, and you can't do this, and I don't need a two-speed sports car, and what is it, safe? You worry about all those things. I have to point this out. I'm one guy. I did this by hand 10 years ago. Uh, for that matter, I've gotten better as a builder, designer, and engineer now. I'm not an entire industry that wastes countless billions of dollars. Oftentimes strangled and led astray by idiot politicians whose party just wants to seize power and control for the future. A sleight of hand trick that's money from one pocket to another. That's it. I actually cared about making the best car possible for people and design aspects. That's why it's efficient. You see, the Omega car is a car. And by car, what I consider that to be is, forget about the drivetrain and engine, that doesn't matter. Right here is a Dodge Viper. It's still a Dodge Viper and it's still a car if I take out the 8 liter V10 and put an electric motor in it. I could take that out and make it hybrid. You can make a car be powered by anything. So power your car by what is the most efficient or worthwhile drivetrain and energy and power source per where you are in the world. That's the other reason why these electric car mandates simply do not work, are unfair, unrealistic, and unnatural. Period. The Omega car, even it being a two-seat sports car, I could make it hybrid. What do you want it to be? Do you want it to be gas hybrid, diesel hybrid? You know, it could be hybrid where the motor only drives a generator and it has electric driven wheels. Or it could be a hybrid where it has an ICE engine driving the wheels with the augmenting of electric motors and batteries. For that matter, and I'm not kidding, and it is not click bite when I say, I can build a nuclear hybrid car with the same techniques. It's actually rather easy. It's not to say that I'm going to do it, but it's very fascinating when you look at what technologies have, were developed by, based on what presidential administration spending what money to have nuclear reactors on what planets and what has actually been certified for ground use on Earth. 
or even potentially trying to be certified for aerospace use. But I digress. You can power it by anything. Whatever power source is the best for the world you want. But the point is we can manufacture cars better. Simple. Well, Casey, you have all these concepts and ability to make it out of different materials, including experimental ones that you're probably not telling us. Thank you for assuming that because it's true. <laughs> Will it be safe? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be safe. There are ways to build cars that are safer than what we do now. Safer than a stamp steel unibody. Did you really think there wasn't? Less toxic, less costly, better for the environment. That's what I wanted to do. I made the point in every single one of my last videos that politicians lie. Yeah. And I think these sweeping car electric mandates may relate to that, which we'll come back to in a few videos. The point is simple. Our cars are designed badly. But the public is being led to believe that it's going to take a magic power source and a magic bullet, so to speak. They're always looking for the band-aid. They're always looking for the magic thing. But what's interesting, when you look at manufacturers, they never build their concept cars. You hear about awesome power sources. You hear about awesome fuels. You hear about awesome engines. They never get used. Why? Is it because we're quagmired in regulation? Is it because of the nature of true politics? And who actually buys and owns the people that represent the people? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Do you really think that our civilization is peak for humanity? Do you really think that what we're doing out there is the best that we can do? Once again, I remind you, I'm one guy in Ohio that's a car guy and built that. Do you really think that's the best that I can do? It's also better than what manufacturers are doing with billions of dollars, maybe even billions of dollars of government bailouts, maybe even billions of dollars of government bailouts coming from politicians that said they wanted to retool so the energy fuel efficient cars of tomorrow built here for the sake of the world. Maybe they're full of crap. Yeah, guys, I'm just putting it out there real because that's it. You want a car to be efficient? Make it slippery. It's pretty simple. Make it roll well. Use good design practices. You want it to be less costly to produce? Make it simpler. You want to make it more environmentally friendly? Make it last longer. Make it more efficient. Make it simpler. Make it out of materials that will be better suited to its needs. You want to have a power source that'll get you the furthest for your dollar or your energy? Well, then choose the one based upon where in the world you are. Are you commuting in LA or London? Well, you're probably gonna have a different car than if you're driving the highways of Indiana. You live on a farm somewhere? Well, you're probably gonna need a different vehicle and a different power source. Do you just commute to and from your home? Just a little commute, you don't really travel? Okay, fine, maybe electricity's great for you. You can plug it in, you're just one person. You're not overloading a whole grid. Ah, but maybe you don't have a car, maybe you have a tank and you're going into battle in a country where you can't just plug in and charge. <laughs> Don't you think electric tanks are a pretty stupid idea? I do. All the Omega car simply re represents is thinking. Thinking for yourself. Doing it better. Not being led down the quagmire of the narrative of the last hundred plus years of the industrialized age led by big companies and politicians. That's why it's so efficient. Can I have these awesome numbers of acceleration and miles per gallon and make something that's safe, passes emissions? What are the other things you guys are worried about? I think those are pretty the big two ones. Yeah, of course you can. I'm one guy that built that. <laughs> God, do you really think this is that hard? It's not. It's not. I don't, I, is this video any good? Shoot, where's my notes? I can tell you what, guys. I thought I was going to be all smart and tell you things, but honestly, this is way too simple. This is keep it simple, stupid. And that's all this is. What the heck did I do with my notes? Uh, that's really it, guys. And the fact of the matter is, you can build something, too, that would do that. But what politician is going to jump on something like this? We only have two things. 
on the political side of things. Drill baby drill and electric car mandates. Are either of those two things the apex of civilization? No. No one can afford the electric cars. They're wildly toxic. We have to mine the world over. They require way too much energy to create everywhere else. Not to mention the fact when you get down to the end of it eventually, basically it can be just government control. And drill baby drill is fine, but that's not going to work forever. It's going to be cool for a good long while. We're going to afford to be able to make our dreams come true. And at least maybe with that, we have the freedom to innovate. Because if we go ahead and just mandate electric cars, look, I'm talking about these relating to policy. This is not politics, this is policy. If we mandate electric cars, you will destroy innovation, period. Where are we going? How stupid do we have to believe that that is the end-all, be-all solution to everything? Now, the, the Omega car is efficient and fast because I made it that way. Because I thought for myself and built something worthwhile. Now, I know that all of you want some magic thing, like I made it out of something you've never heard of, or I've programmed something, or I designed something new. No, I didn't. Everything that exists within that car is something that somebody else could do too. And frankly, the concepts are probably something somebody's already thought of too. But the difference is I went out and did it. I'm out here talking about it. I have to admit, I like all the people that we would call conspiracy theorists, but in 2024, we realize there's very few conspiracy theorists anymore because all those people ended up just being right. <laughs> so generally speaking, people like me like to vanish, whether we get offed or bought out or intimidated or ruined. Um, the populace doesn't like people that make things better. But I don't really care, and I never did, because I like the truth, and I like making things better. And that's what that is. I'll probably build more cars. But like I said, my ambition was to build a material science company. That when I'm creating the IP and the different techniques, both perfecting things that may already exist to doing experimental ones I have in mind, all of the experiments build interesting products from home good and furniture to automobile parts and automobiles. And you know what? I'm just going to keep making things better because it's not really that hard. Okay, so enough of that. By the way, if you want to know how to pronounce my last name, it's Putch, as in put your money where your mouth is. So I think it's time for me to do another driving series and compare this to an electric vehicle and see what's better. And then maybe after that, I'll tell you about the politics specifically that pissed me off enough to build this car. See you guys next time.